Vía Alameda de Main Avenue in Santiago, and I met Andres Albornoz, Birdman, the Birdman, the blind street vendor, and I started to talk to him, and he took me to the other blind street vendors, and uh, it was just for me discovering uh, their world. And uh, I know it was crazy to make a film. I knew it was crazy to think about another film, but it was my first of expressing myself. And it was like, uh, you know, it just, I just need to do it. <laughs> and that it was Andres and the Birdman and, and, and the other street vendors. They were the ones who, 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 who pushed me to do it. Not push me, but inspired me to do it. So did you think at that time, oh, maybe I should do a documentary on just the street vendors or did, was it that you needed to involve yourself in this? Oh, no, it was, I was just going to make a film about them. Uh, but uh, when I was um, shooting and as I was talking to them, I went every day to the Alameda and spoke to them and sat with them and uh, Witness the kind of relationship they had with people. They told me about the struggles and everything. And I wanted to make it about them. But then uh, one of them told me, well, uh, why, why are you telling our story? And uh, because I, 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 want, I told them, I, because I want to walk into blindness with you. I want to understand blindness. And they said, well, what about you? Uh, and I said, well, I am not blind yet. And they see the man said, well, uh, what, uh, what is that little cane you have in your hands for? <laughs> and by then I could not walk by myself without a cane. So um, he said, uh, there was a point when he said, if uh, this was, his name was Guillermo, he said, well, if, if you don't, if you're not in the film, I will not uh, work with you anymore. <laughs> uh, he said that I was a bridge between the sighted and the blind and that the people who saw would, listen to them better if I, if one of them, meaning me then, uh, spoke to them with the language of heart. So um, that's how I did it. That's what made me do it. That, that makes me think, you know, as a documentary filmmaker, of course, your approach would be to approach your subjects and, and distance yourself from the film itself. Um, but having said that to you, did you feel an enormous then responsibility? Not responsibility. Perhaps I should have felt responsibility. But of course, I felt a sense of commitment to them totally in order to deliver what they needed me to deliver, something that was also for them. But, uh, or, but then I said, well, them is us. Uh, what I felt was very afraid. One, that I would go into darkness before I was able to finish the film. And the other thing also was um, uh, fear of walking into blindness. How am I going to do this if, 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 if I don't see anymore? And I had to... I think we might have lost lost her oh wait we we lost we lost you a bit there you're still muted hello yes yes good yes, sorry so yes oh sorry you were you muted yourself again Hello. Okay, good. Okay, I will not touch anything, do anything. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Yes, it was a sense of responsibility and commitment, but also a threat. As a filmmaker, I wanted to make a film which spoke with my voice and with my eyes. And I wanted to, I, I had to shoot a film in a different way. So I was fortunate enough as to uh, look for people and find the people I wanted to explain to them the way I saw and to legitimize that way, not as a different way of seeing, I mean, as a, different way, as a different way of seeing, not as something distorted. Because 
uh, people who sighted filmmakers have made films about blindness, but I had the commitment to them to make a film the way I saw it. And uh, that was very difficult and very beautiful. And it freed me, it totally freed me as a filmmaker because I could do whatever I wanted. And that's how I, with the, the, my director of photography, we started to work, and with sound, of course, started to work and experience with different ways of seeing, uh, like camera, the way we use the camera, like the light, when you go blind, sometimes there is so much light that you cannot see. And it's a sense of being totally lost. And there is total whiteness, whiteness, whiteness. And so that's how we discovered to open the camera and open it and open it and open it. So it was totally chaos, but also something beautiful. And we also were with prisons because sometimes the light breaks in many different things and it goes crazy. So we also were with prisons. And uh, I wanted to do it organically, not in the studio. After in the studio, I wanted to do it while we were shooting. Oh, so all of those effects were in camera. Yeah, yeah. No, we don't. We didn't do. I think a, a couple of of, of effects later on, but the majority of it was done in, on camera, working with camera and with sound. And then great. we in the studio we follow up. I'm not sure if I answered your question. I went somewhere. No, else. that's great. That's great. I'm wondering if other people have questions. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, Maria. Uh, yes, I had a question of how is, you kind of touched upon a little bit, but how is the relationship between the camera people and yourself? How did you manage to guide them? And how was the process of all the different scenes and how were they shot? What was that, what was that like? It was a process. Uh, they were very much, Support, they were very supportive of me and they trusted me. I, at the beginning, I felt very insecure because I was walking into untrodden territory. Um, but I just started to, to speak to them how I saw. I think there was a turning point uh, when we were shooting on the, with the blind street vendors. And um, I wanted, and then before we enter into the cathedral, the last scene, of the film when I went to the cathedral with all the lights. Before we went to the cathedral, I blindfolded them, the camera person and the, and the sound person, and I guided them. And uh, they were just walking with their camera and with their, with their microphone and just said, just listen, listen, listen. And uh, I spoke to them. And then uh, we went to the cathedral and we got all this beautiful effects. I think for them it was also freeing in that sense because they had to free themselves. Does that answer your question? Yes, definitely. And I, I can ask another one. <laughs> but, yeah, sure. Um, I have worked in documentary film, so I know that getting any documentary film is very hard to get it uh, funded. And I'm just wondering how was the process to be able to get funding for such a special project that is outside of the norm, I'm sure in the applications. It was difficult. We got a big amount of funds from Chile. I think there was more sensitivity towards the subject. Also, I mean, I, I applied, uh, the first time I applied, it was accepted, uh, but I was still not myself. Uh, I was still speaking as, as a sighted filmmaker. So I, it was very difficult. So I got a little bit of money from Chile at the beginning, about $5,000. And with that, I, I, I shot the first uh, scenes with the street vendors. And um, then I, I kept working, but mostly inside, you know, trying to, to, to find my, 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 my blind gaze because the blind gaze is not only a way of seeing, it's a way of being, it's also a political stance, how you stand into the world. Your vision is not, only, not necessarily distorted, but distorted compared to what, to normal and what is normal. So you have to break all those patterns. To answer your question in terms of funding, it was difficult. The film, I started shooting in 2011, my first time. 
And uh, it was, was, I also had to change editors also at a certain point. Um, it is always difficult. Every film is so difficult sometimes and, and so beautiful. Uh, the, so most of the fun, uh, funding came from Chile, from the East sort of an arts council in Chile, the Fondo Audiovisual. Uh, but others came also from, from Canada, from, um, from um, uh, hot dogs, uh, and different uh, chicken and egg in the United States. It was a long process. It's not easy, as you know, as you say. It was also because parts of me, I mean, people did not want it necessarily to hear the voice of a blind person. At the beginning of the film, I saw it today after many, many years, and it, it is sad. And I didn't want to find, I, I didn't want people to feel pity for me, but I also wanted to honor the pain of losing something that I have, because it's not the same that you are born blind, you know? So it is not, it's a film that many people, the industry, many people say, no, 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 it's, it's, it's sad. People are not going to buy it. But the film won nine awards, international awards. And it was a collective effort with my team, you know? And it was, it is difficult to get funds for these films. It is difficult to defend your voice as a filmmaker. Yes, and I imagine that it's even more difficult to try and convince people that you are more than capable of making a film when you're losing your vision. <laughs> yes, because people kept saying, oh, the camera is your eyes. Yes and no. The eyes, my, my vision as a filmmaker comes from here, from here, from my heart, from my eyes, from my memory. That's my vision. And he adds his vision, his sighted vision. But all those things are things you learn in the process. Uh, that's that's very profound. I really like that. Um, does anyone have other questions for Maria Teresa? Yeah, I had a question. Um, at the beginning of the film, you said that um, this is your last film and that you left your lover and that you stopped doing tango when you're talking about the grieving. And throughout the film, I, I was really moved to see you, how you were discovering other worlds or other things in you and in life uh, throughout um, the going blind. So now um, I was wondering uh, how your relationship with image and filmmaking change, or how would you define image now? What's an image um, compared uh, to uh, de cómo lo veías antes, pues? A cómo ahorita te relacionas con la imagen y con tu práctica artística que descubriste a través de, de la ceguera? Mm. Um, how do I define an image now? Yes, it evolves. It evolves every day because blindness, as many disabilities, is not stagnant. Nothing stays as is. Blindness in me has been decreasing. I mean, increasing. <laughs> My world is disappearing and disappearing. My world is disappearances, visually. But other things appear. Um, I asked that question that you asked me, what is an image, to one of the Brian Street vendors. And one of them told me, image is sound. Uh, image is sound, it is true for me, but it's also touch, it is also sensations. For example, when, even when meeting people, you know, it is not only the sound of their voices, it is also your skin. <laughs> It is also the way you get to know the world. It's a different way. Um, there's much more disappearances now. I am working in another film at this moment. I am finishing another film. Again, as in Shadow Girl, as just, I just jumped into it because it had to do with Chile, with, with my country, and with the constitutional process that was taking place. Uh, and it took two years. I just finished shooting uh, uh, last year in December. And I am relying for many things on people, but now I know what to ask. 
And I think image changes not only for us as filmmakers, it changes for every one of us. For all filmmakers, image changes and the way to make images. I think as we go, um, I think of touch a lot when you, when you speak image, of touch, of senses, other senses, and that enriches the image. I am in my editing process now, for example, I keep telling the editor, <laughs> Sound, bring the sound in. Because it's a documentary, you think that they just, it's very visual. My film, the one I'm making now, is very visual. Not so much as Chicago Bear because the topic is different, but it's very visual. And it's also very much sound. And I think we all gain with that. We forget filmmakers about those two aspects, how they can work together, and how to bring our other senses into the film also, into filmmaking. I also have a question in the same line. Uh, first, I want to thank you for such a moving um, film. I, I really enjoyed the whole story and the process. And speaking of the process, I wanted to know, I understand that the edition and the whole creation was more like collaborative because I, I just want to know how the edition and how could you put this amazing way of the way you were seeing the colors? Because I felt that I was, I felt the, colors in a different way and I wanted to know how could you still put that in the film and the edition and how it worked with the collaborator collaborations and because I really felt it I really appreciate that because I understand it's coming from a different point of view from a different perspective and I really felt that and I was really interested in the colors and how it was shaped through the film and I, I wanted to know more about like that process and also like the collaboration are like around how you can still put your the way you wanted it to be as it is now. Thank you. I think I, I, I work with people that respected me and, and respected my vision. It's not because I am narcissistic, but because it had to be about it had to be about my vision. I was the blind one. <laughs> so I had to be right. Um, uh, I think, for example, if you're in the film, you have a big advantage. In the film I'm making, I'm also in the film. It's because you direct, but you are also in the film. You guide. So the cameraman and the sound man, I always told them, just follow me. Or I, or I would call attention to them. For example, speaking of the colors, it was that, that, that stone. I was touching it because it was so beautiful. But we were looking for those kind of images, you know? The, the, in the image in the water, Lake Ontario, all that is Lake Ontario. And the, the light and everything. I told him, and he and this was a fantastic camera person, and Daniel Grant in, 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 in Canada, and Arnaldo Rodriguez in, in Chile. Uh, and just direct them with using my body as a way to direct them. Come with me and follow me, and I will go and look for the sounds, look for the images, the, the leaves, for example, you know? So in that sense, I have an advantage. And in the editing, uh, I work with people that were fantastic listeners. And they were also, when I say listener, it's not that they did whatever I wanted. I also, I always encourage my people to, to work with me. What do you think? How do you see? And we discuss and we talk and we look for each other, for things together. It, it, in that sense, it's very collaborative. But at the same time, you have to take responsibility as a director for your film, because it is your vision and you are responsible. Uh, respecting the work of everybody else you know, that works with me because they're all artists, you know. Do we have a, another question? Yeah. Leela? Um, Maria Teresa. Leela. Really powerful film. I wanted to tell you, I received it as if you were walking through water. Air became like water. And it was really experiential because I could um, perceive the sensations that you were uh, navigating when you walked. And mm -hmm. it was as if I was there in the air with you and it was a kind of thickness or experience of um, when you talked about other senses, it was it, as if the environment itself was activated, not just sound, but touch and the the sense of being uh, so and I think it was from your presence 
that I perceived it through your point of view and the use of the blur, not consistently, but you know, that you'd introduce it from time to time would take me into that sense of, you know, how you might be perceiving. So thank you. Thanks to you. It's a comment you would say, you would have said many years ago when you met him. It's the kind of comment that you would have made many years ago when I first met you, I think. Is it, does it feel like air? Like I was wondering about those other senses that are coming in, uh, as if the air itself is touching or guiding you or alerting you. You know, when the person in the off screen said, watch out for the stairs, you know, <laughs> and, and you did. Uh, yes, uh, I think it's the air, but it's also the water. The water has also, water moves, well, the wind moves, but the wind is more, when, I, when you say air, I, I think of wind because wind is what I feel more than air. Uh, the wind, the movement, the water, yeah, the elements. We are so fortunately, so fortunate of living in this kind of world that unfortunately we are losing, unfortunately. But um, yeah, this is also something that concerns me. Um, the, the appearance of the, poly, the, of the street vendors is also political stance when I spoke about the political stance. And I want to make beauty film I wanted to make film uh, mix beauty and, and, and poetry with, 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 with life. At first, this film was described as auto, audio, how is it? Auto, autobiography, but it's not an autobiography, it's autoethnography because it includes the group of people. My reality is inserted in a social reality, in social milieu. Anyways, yes, air and water and many other things and wind. <laughs> I was thinking too of your introduction of the political space that you inhabited with others, you know, the experience of being tear gassed, but mm -hmm. it, it was introduced in a way that it made it all part of that experience. So I found it what Mitty was saying, you know, that layer of, um, I've only seen it once, I haven't you know, I'm not, I haven't seen it a number of times, but I thought the political element was a strand, but because it was just one of the strands, it was even more powerful. We are, we're, are running out of time. Um, perhaps we have uh, one last question from someone. Sure, I, I can be the last one. Um, hi, Maria Teresa, this is Santiago. Um, thank you for sharing your story. For uh, We were really happy to, to watch your film here, uh, Concordia. And uh, with this conversation, it was really making me think how, as visual artists, I'm not a filmmaker, but some visual artists here also uh, in the space, how, um, well, how we even say that we are visual artists, how we think of uh, different art practices uh, as so we really thought of as being really visually centered, right? So I really appreciated how in the film and in the, the, the comments that you were uh, giving us, how the the center point right it opens up that for that discussion of of not being centered on vision but really how you get to know your family right that you said it's it's beyond just seeing their faces it's really about memory it's really about touch it's their sound and how as a filmmaker also the the point of the camera it's not just the eye but also those other elements that are present so i think i really appreciate that uh, your film really opening up the discussion of of moving away from this kind of vision centered uh, point of how we approach uh, artistic practices, uh, be it in video or any type of other other practice. So, so I really appreciate that. And in terms of the political element of the street vendors and the situation in Chile, I I. I was wondering if you've, throughout the years, if you're still in contact with some of these people, also uh, 
taking into account more of the most recent social uprisings that have happened in, in Chile, which um, uh, the Birdman mentioned how he was tear gas in the past years, years ago, but it's a situation that is still going on uh, in most recent years. So I wondered about that relationship that you maybe uh, have kept with some of these uh, street vendors or, or if you know of, of their current situation. Thanks for that question, Santiago. Uh, yes, the, with the blind street vendors, I try to keep in touch. It's difficult when you are here. Berman, El Hombre Pájaro, uh, he was, somebody wrote to me, one somebody in the audience found my email and told me that he was in very bad shape because he, he, was, he had no, no way to live, no, no home and this and that. They are, some of them are totally, especially after COVID, you know, uh, blind man, Birdman was losing his ears also. He was also deaf. So they had kicked him out of his place because he was listening to the radio very loud. And they didn't want to be with him anymore. So they threw him to the streets. And somebody, one of the members of the audience in Chile, so somebody who had seen my film, they found out that he was in the streets. So she called me, she contacted me and asked me to do something because she thought that if I, if I was in Canada, I had lots of money, so I could just send money. Anyways, uh, people took care of him, but it's, it's, it's a very difficult situation. And uh, I haven't seen them anymore. Well, I don't see them anymore. <laughs> Anyways, but uh, after COVID, they all, they were eradicated and they haven't, I haven't gone to the Alameda. But I was shooting in during the constitutional process, and uh, I, I I never I didn't find any one of them. I don't know um, where they are, but uh, yeah. In okay. The... Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, I'm I'm very sorry, but I just got word that we have to end our session. Um, Maria Teresa, we could talk forever. Uh, it's a brilliant film. Uh, I think we're, we're all in agreement about that. Thank you so much for making it. Um, we really look forward to your next film. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm going to email you uh, okay. just because I, I think your, your vision as a filmmaker has just expanded beyond any, anything. It's, it's just, uh, it's so interesting and complex. So thank you so much for your work and for spending some time with us. On the contrary, thanks to you, Miri, Laila, Santiago. Thanks to everyone for seeing the film, for watching the film and, and for being here. And uh, thanks a lot, thanks a lot. I am very grateful. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right, so we'll be closing up the Zoom now. On behalf of Fourth Space, we just wanna say a big thank you to everyone involved. Uh, we'll be closing up the Zoom and the live stream. So thank you again for joining us online and in person. Um, and we hope to see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye. Thank you.